Hi there. Today we're celebrating International Zebra Day with a quick sketching tutorial on sketching none other than zebras. Did you know that a herd of zebras is called a zeal or a dazzle? And that each zebra's stripes are as unique as your fingerprints? <laughs> Hi, I'm Christine Elder and I'm a naturalist and artist and I love teaching people just like you about the natural world through the practice of nature sketching. So grab a pencil and a paper and let's get started. First, we wanna just look at our zebra and uh, look at some of the anatomical features of the zebra. Uh, you can see they're uh, a bit different from a horse <laughs> in being uh, shorter and stockier and they have an uh, upright uh, stiff mane and a shorter tail. Uh, and of course they have lots of stripes. Uh, so we're gonna first work on the uh, outline and so here you see I'm going to start by just uh, look, trying to uh, see how large my drawing should be on the paper. So I'm making little uh, marks uh, at the top and the bottom, the left and the right. So I'm drawing in exactly um, the same size. And then I just work really lightly. Uh, now this uh, video is going uh, twice as fast as normal, uh, but uh, I do sketch pretty fast and very light and loose. So you can barely see those lines. And I'm just working a little bit everywhere so I'm not uh, getting too uh, uh, hung up in any one area. So I'll work on the uh, head and then the neck and the legs and the body. And I'll go around and around uh, until I am a lot closer to the proportions. And you can see I'm going back and forth and doing what's called ground truthing, ground truthing. <laughs> and so that's where um, I'm looking at the uh, length and the width and the height uh, of the zebra and also measuring how far um, the parts of the zebra are from the edge of the paper. Uh, so generally, uh, this is the way you would draw something when you're drawing something that's the very same size. Uh, and also, if you were going to draw something smaller, uh, then you would still need to make um, a proportional uh, uh, measurements like this. But if you were measuring something there and it was like, oh, three inches, and I want to draw it uh, half as big, then I would draw the part an inch and a half. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting in the weeds here. <clears throat> but you see how uh, I'm just going super light and loose. Uh, I'm not worrying about any of the quote-unquote wrong marks. I'm just looking around, uh, getting relative shapes uh, and proportions. I'm noticing uh, the negative shapes. This uh, zebra does have some good negative shapes uh, that will help me. So like if I use my cursor here and I can see the negative shape of this, uh, this uh, what do you call this, a triangle uh, here between the back legs then I can look at that shape there. Um, and so anyway, now uh, I'm working on the head and uh, it's kind of similar to a horse, but again, it's stockier, more like uh, a donkey or a mule. Uh, and the ears, you can't see them very well from this direction, but a zebra's ears are much larger and more rounded uh, than a horse's. Uh, so just again now, you can see that I'm uh, pressing a little bit harder on my pencil the second time around. Again, checking back and forth. I'll continue to make uh, corrections uh, to the anatomy. So you'll see some uh, kind of mistakes, uh, quote unquote, along the way. But I don't erase because it's better to uh, see your wrong uh, line than to just keep erasing the wrong line and then drawing the wrong line again. <laughs> That's what I tend to do. <clears throat> kind of like how Snoopy kept uh, sitting on the top of his dog house and writing, you know, the great American novel and he would get one sentence in and then crush up the paper and throw it off the dog house and put another paper in the typewriter and start again. Uh, so it's better to leave uh, the lines that aren't quite correct and later on erase them. So here I am working on the hooves. Uh, uh, legs and hooves of a, of a horse or a zebra uh, are a little bit more challenging. Again, you're going to want to look at things like these uh, negative shapes uh, here, the triangle here and the triangle here and the um, 
90 degree angle here uh, to get that correct. So it just takes looking back and forth a whole light, lot. So uh, while I'm drawing, you can't see my eyes, but I'm, I'm looking at my, uh, the, the zebra photograph and then I'm ground truthing it with the sketch, looking back and forth and back and forth. And as you can see, I'm using my finger, kind of following along. I'll put my finger in the area that I wanna sketch and I'll work on that. Now you can see um, I'm cleaning things up a bit now that I've got a pretty uh, good outline. So I'm erasing uh, some of those lines. You can see this is really the first time I've done a lot of erasing. So it's really better to just get your lines down and erase later, okay? So now again, ground truthing, looking all over. So I'm gonna start again at the head and kind of move around the whole body. Uh, you really wanna get the character of the head and the eye as close as you can. That's what really makes an animal look uh, alive and realistic. So getting that, getting back to the uh, neck and that upright mane and the withers and the rump, uh, looking at the legs again and the tail, that short little tail, uh, going down into the hawk, uh, the uh, knee. This is actually the knee right there and the hoof and the fetlock area. So again, you can see I'm just uh, ground truthing, going back and forth double checking my lines, pressing a, a little bit harder, maybe like maybe twice as hard as I did with those very first lines. Uh, and again, double checking my measurements, the, the width and of the height and of the belly and the width of the leg. Um, noticing my front leg was, was too thin, so doing a little bit of erasing there. Uh, so you're never going to get the exact right line the first time. You're just going to go back and forth and back and forth. No matter how great of an artist you are, or how much experience you've had, you're just going to be going back and forth and looking at it. There I am working on the uh, shoulder here and the neck. And uh, again, I'm looking at something there. Something's wrong. Okay, see, I noticed that, uh, that here, this line from the belly to the, um, the chest there is one line. And before I didn't have that. Uh, and so uh, the chest was too high compared to the belly. Again, now looking at the uh, rest of the body, the neck and the jaw. Uh, the jaw is really wide in a zebra, again, kind of like a donkey. So getting it a lot stronger, you know, not, not like an Arabian horse, but more, more uh, strong and sturdy like a, a donkey or a mule. And then looking closely at that muzzle and the, um, the chin and the mouth, tightening that up a bit so that I can uh, get that more correct. Looking at that eye. And uh, again, the, the finger kind of helps me to keep, keep where I'm at. Double checking, uh, my eye was a little bit too big and too far forward. So again, looking at where it was. Okay, so now I'm just looking a little bit everywhere and I'm lightening up that, um, those marks again that didn't, weren't quite exact. So you're gonna be doing that. You're gonna be going back and forth lighter and darker, erasing, putting lines back in again. That's just how it goes. Uh, so um, now again, I'm gonna go, go back, look a bit at the uh, mane, that upright mane is dark at the ends, that dark melanin strengthens it. Uh, the withers on the back, the rump, just strengthening that line, uh, looking at where the lowest part of the back was and the rump, the farthest left part of the rump, that hawk, that fetlock, looked like I wanted to get a little bit uh, more accurate there. And looking at that negative shape between the back legs, the knee here, working on the knee, the belly, we get the belly a little bit fatter, uh, just a teensy bit. <laughs> so uh, yeah. There we go, a little bit fatter. And um, looking at the uh, leg, I still don't have the leg wide enough. So again, no problem. I'm just gonna widen it a bit more 
and uh, then do some erasing there, getting a little bit closer. And that, that shoulder's looking better, that chest and shoulder's looking a bit better now. Uh, oops, get that cursor out of the way. Again, double checking with your pencil as a measuring tool uh, that you've got the right angles. Here's another nice negative shape and angle, that 90 degrees there. Looking at the, uh, again, you want to get the, the, the head and the, the eye and the muzzle as close as you can uh, to really give it the personality. And now I'm just going to lighten up all, all my lines because you see the, uh, the zebra doesn't really have an outline like where the white stripes are. There's not really a, a line there, especially here. So I'm going to lighten that up so that mainly just the stripes are what is um, defining the edge of the zebra. Fixing, oh, I'm adding the uh, left uh, hoof. You can see that just a tiny bit. So I added that there. And just, uh, again, just continuing to, to ground truth all around. Looking at it back and forth, making sure. Okay, now I'm going to add this dull, uh, darker sketching pencil, and I'm going to start adding some shadowing. I'm going to do that before I add any of the stripes. I want to show some of that three-dimensional form, uh, the shadow under the belly, uh, on that back leg that's shaded from the sun, uh, the uh, hip bone area there, and the flank, uh, the legs, and then going to add the coloration of the black tail. Uh, and then the coloration of the muzzle, that uh, melanin there, uh, that dark skin helps to protect them from the sun because there's not a lot of fur there and also from sharp grasses that they may be browsing on. Now we're going to add some of the dark melanin of the uh, lower legs. Uh, again, that strengthens uh, melanin as a strengthening uh, pigment in animals' bodies. So I'm adding that coloration. So basically first adding uh, the shadows from the sun and the dark coloration other than the stripes first. So that then when I add the stripes, uh, those will look more realistic. Okay, now I'm going to start looking at the stripes. Uh, of course, there's, they're different in every single animal. They're very unique, just like a fingerprint. Uh, and they also vary uh, within the three species of zebra, as well as um, within the species subspecies. So I'm just going to start, and I kind of use my finger to kind of help figure out where I'm going to go. And uh, when you're drawing it, you can, uh, you know, it would take you forever to actually draw all of those stripes exact. And you could do it for fun if you wanted to, but I'm going to do it kind of loosely here. And of course, that's what I would be doing if I was out in the field because uh, zebras aren't going to be standing still for you for very long. Uh, so uh, then I would be uh, adding, um, in this case, I'm adding the dark edge of the mane, which is all darkened with melanin and the, the black tail. And then kind of looking around, figuring out where I'm going to start, because it's kind of confusing. Where should you start with the stripes? So I'm going to start at the, uh, the head, working on the head a bit more, and giving it a little bit more shadowing there as well. I'm going to start with my mechanical pencil, because there's some really fine, small stripes up on the forehead. And so I'm going to get those. And again, I'm just kind of approximating um, those and using my uh, finger to be pointing at the areas that I'm trying to work on to kind of keep track. And again, it's not exact, but it's okay that it's not exact because like I said, every single zebra uh, individual is has an individual striping pattern just like your fingerprint. So uh, it really doesn't matter unless you are trying to exactly uh, sketch this uh, individual. Uh, so don't worry too much about trying to get it um, exact. 
Uh, but it is a very fun kind of right brain exercise to be looking at those stripes. And you can kind of think about um, how wide they are. You can notice that they are not the width. You know, it's not like you put a black ribbon on the zebra. Um, they vary in width. You can also notice um, uh, kind of the black versus the white, how wide it is. So are those black stripes that you're drawing in um, as wide as the white or wider or narrower? That definitely varies among the three species of zebras. And they will vary uh, in coloration a bit also. So I'm stopping here because this was just an example of how you would start to add those stripes and let you continue on your own. If you enjoyed watching this video, you might enjoy downloading your own photo uh, from my website so that you can draw along as well. Check it out at my website at christineelder.com. So thanks for joining me and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I post a video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.